Okay, hello again. Good afternoon. We're starting to record the class and we're going to start the so much expected and waited. When we started uh, this unit, we were saying that we were going to talk about this topic. And so it's finally here today. We're going to talk about anxiety. We have been covering uh, communication strategies, effective communication strategies for unit one. And one of the topics that we need to cover is anxiety. And actually that was the first thing that you guys commented or that you guys mentioned that everybody suffers from it. And one of the questions, as I remember from our first class, one of the questions was like, hey, what can I do? I, I, I feel so nervous. I feel like something happens whenever I'm gonna speak in public. So what should I do? Why should it change? How can I manage that? So there are so many questions come and so many questions start changing what we believe and what it could happen to our, our presentation actually to have a, an effective communication. And so if we are in that topic, I'm going to start projecting some uh, I do have a PowerPoint presentation prepared ahead of hand, so we can um, actually use it as a visual aid for that. And I'm going to start explaining what we can do and what it actually means to have some anxiety when you are speaking in public. I'm going to introduce even a new word that you might not be like related to it or that you might not know that word but it actually exists so let's start and what you're seeing right now hopefully hopefully by now you're seeing a projection of these slides that they are called managed speaking anxiety and let me just tell you something uh during this week we're going to cover two different topics one is about the managing the anxiety when you are speaking. And the second one, it will be referred to the vocabulary. We talked that we talked about that last week, that we were going to cover some vocabulary for industrial engineers, some technical vocabulary. It's very simple vocabulary that you might know it already, but still you need to practice with it. So by now, by this time, you already have two different homeworks that are activated. And those homeworks are about vocabulary, that vocabulary that is related. There is one of them that uh, is related to technology, simple vocabulary as things like a computer, some uh, software and stuff like that. Very simple with little images. But there's another one that it has, again, sort of like basic technical vocabulary for an industrial engineer, but you're going to have to cover some information of work related. You're going to make some statements with that kind of vocabulary. And again, let me just remind you, if you have any questions about any homework, just contact me and I will try to solve any of those questions that you may have. So let's go with the first one, which is about managing your speaking anxiety. Okay. And today we're going to cover this um, related to our topic. We're going to mention initial considerations about speaking with anxiety, social anxiety disorder, because it might be a problem that needs some more treatment. It might not be that easy for everyone. Uh, then we're gonna cover about getting ready. How can you get ready to stop feeling that anxiety or managing that anxiety? And of course, if once you're ready, we're gonna go to the day of the presentation, the actual day that you are going to be in front of an audience. Remember this, an audience could be one person or could be a big group of people. 
So it doesn't matter for a big group of people. It actually doesn't matter if it is very small, a very small group or a very big group. Still, if you are feeling anxiety, it's about the same. And here we're gonna check for some tips on how you can get prepared to successfully pre present whatever your topic is, your ideas, and to get rid or reduce that feeling of anxiety that you may be having or that you may be experiencing when you need to speak in front of an audience, all right? And then, of course, we're gonna talk about the presentation as a positive experience stemming from careful preparation. And that's what I was referring to, that we're going to cover some points that are tips or key points that can help you. Okay, so about this time, we're gonna take on those key points that might help you managing that anxiety. And last but not least, we're gonna talk about additional considerations for managing your anxiety. So let's start, and I wanna start with this. And this is the so-called new word that I was promising for you, glossophobia. Fear of speaking in public. You didn't know that. It's a phobia. Okay, it might be bigger for some people than other people, but it's a phobia and it's called like that. Glossophobia. <gasps> yes, existed and it has a name. The fear of speaking in public. I have experienced that fear and I'm pretty sure, 100% sure that all of you Everyone in the group has experienced glossophobia. Let's see what it is. Okay, the big definition is the fear of speaking in public. Okay, yeah, I have, I feel the fear. But there are signs that you can see and that you can understand that you are suffering from this phobia, glossophobia. Let's see. Glossophobia, like I said, is the fear of speaking in public. It is the single most common fear. If you are worried about this, that's what I'm saying. I'm 100% sure that everyone here in the group suffers from glossophobia because it's the most common phobia. It's not like, oh, I'm afraid of spiders. Uh-huh, yeah, but that's a different phobia and not everybody suffers from that or i am afraid of closed spaces ah okay so that's another phobia but when you have to speak to an audience and especially like this is why i showed this image with a microphone what you are seeing right now this microphone almost everyone when is when that person is going to use a microphone if you haven't uh, experienced uh, some exercises if you don't do what we're gonna mention here then you start feeling it like your hands start sweating you're shaking your face turns in a different color and so on so if i'm giving you a question have you ever experienced glossophobia I'm pretty sure that everybody here is going to say yes. But let's see, let's, uh, why don't we take the moment for that? We could, we could actually make, make uh, the question right now. Tell me, have you ever experienced glossophobia? So I'm asking for, a, for an answer as a yes, no. Yes. <laughs> Jasmine said yes. Nope. Anael, no. Oh, that's very good, Anael. I'm, I'm so happy to hear that. That's really nice. You are in the very little percentage of people that don't experience that. Very few people. 
has never experienced glossophobia. What about Cristobal Galaz? Hi. Have you ever experienced, experienced glossophobia, Cristobal? No. No? You're kidding. So you never experienced the fear of speaking in public? Cristobal? Can you repeat? Have you ever experienced fear? Fear when you speak in public? Cristobal? Next book, let's go back to you. Have you ever experienced fear? Fear, are you understanding what fear means? Miedo. When you speak in public? Yes, yes. That's what I'm saying. And then you said, no, you have experienced glossophobia. That's what I'm referring to. What about you, Arlette? Hi, Arlette, come back to life. Hi. Have you ever experienced glossophobia? In Spanish, no. In English, yes. <laughs> this is funny. Never in Spanish? Maybe because you don't have as much experience as speaking with a different audience. Because maybe if you just speak to your group in class, or people from the same age, it's kind of like normal. It becomes your day to your day of life. It becomes your day to day, like the simple things that you will do every day. But whenever you change for a new audience, ah, there is some fear, some little fear. Let's imagine, Arlette, I'm going to keep with you. Let's imagine that right now, since you are almost finishing your major as an industrial engineer, let's imagine that you're going to give a presentation, not here. We are taking you to Universidad de Sonora, to a different university, and you're going to give a presentation about manufacturing, and your audience is made of professors from Universidad de Sonora and people from 10 different companies that are dedicated to manufacturing. If you put yourself into that situation, do you think that you're going to be like, it's in Spanish, that you're not going to feel fear or do you think that you may be feeling some fear? Arlette, and anyone can help if, if anyone from the group wants to answer too, that's fine with me. What do you think, Arlette? I'm putting you into a different situation. Give a presentation about a topic, this topic is about manufacturing. And then your audience is made of professors from a different university and professionals, people from 10 different companies that work in manufacturing. How will you feel? I think when you start to speak. Um... Yes. When you start speaking, that's fine. What do you think that will happen when you start speaking? You need to tell me a little more. You wanna give it a try? Mm, is when I can feel nervous or okay 
so that's that's the thing when you start speaking maybe you're gonna feel nervous because there's a new challenge a new challenge most of the time gets your body into a different state it moves it moves your mind and then you start thinking so many things at the same time that you start feeling nervous. You are right, Arlette. The nervousness comes to you. And that's also part of glossophobia. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. That it might not have happened in your experience, but it may happen later on. And that's why we are covering this topic. So glossophobia, Almost 75% of people experience this, and that's what we were referring. Most of the people experience glossophobia, and you are not alone. There's a lot of people in this world. So if the majority of the people experience this, how can we overcome this problem? You cannot eliminate your fear. That's something that is true. Psychologically speaking, we cannot remove it but we can manage to reduce it. Your fear or in all of the symptoms might be up here, but we could reduce it over here. And that's what we need to work with. And as long as you keep practicing with this, through the years of your career, your future time, then you're going to start having more experience. And with that experience, that fear and this glossophobia is going to lower and it's going to keep lowering and might not disappear completely, but almost, which is what we're looking for, to reduce it, but to make it disappear, to not have it happening on ourselves. So is this a disorder, a social anxiety disorder? Yes. And it's as common as we mentioned. And sometimes you may need some extra help, but actually for glossophobia, for speaking to an audience, we can work it out. We as professionals, and, and I'm calling you, because you are in the seventh semester of industrial engineering, it means that you are meant to be and, and to be taught as professionals. You are like this close of, of being an engineer. So you might refer to yourself also as professional. So this is the thing. We can manage, we can administrate this disorder and we can sort of control this anxiety. This is the good news. Things that will let us know that this is a social anxiety disorder is that you may experience some shaking. Sometimes it's in your hands, sometimes it's in your legs, sometimes you feel it like even in your arm that you're shaking. And sometimes that shaking also goes to your speaking. Uh, Sometimes it feels like that, but it's when it's kind of like very hard, but you still can manage it. Blushing, you know what blushing means? When, you're, when your face gets kind of red, that's blushing. When you are very nervous, when your body's feeling it, then you turn a little red in your cheeks and then you blush naturally blush a pounding heart and you start feeling that you feel like oh it's increasing it's pounding a little more and faster then you feel the nervousness and that's part of the social anxiety disorder and it's common, like we mentioned before, it's common because you are experiencing speaking in front of a lot of people 
basically when we talk about a big audience, it's hard. So if you don't know how to control this anxiety, it might become a, an actual psychological disorder. But the good news is it shouldn't be as right now in your, as your age and at the moment that you are professionally speaking, it shouldn't be a psychological disorder yet. And we should be able to keep controlling that social anxiety disorder. Another of the, uh, what it can happen is a quivering voice. Quivering voice will be when it's breaking, when your voice keeps breaking. If you notice that that's happening to you, it's because it's part of the anxiety, what your body is showing, that your body can't keep going if this disorder takes your mind and of course all of your body another symptom shortness of breath that if you're experiencing shortness of breath then it becomes uh, it's close to be a psychological problem because when you're losing your breath your mind your your brain is not getting all of the oxygen that it needs and you could actually experience something very bad, which is called, you could actually faint. And that's very dangerous. Fainting is related to desmayarse. So that's kind of like an extreme, but it can happen. So we need to be careful if we start, if we start experiencing this thing, shortness of breath, we should know that A, hey, Something is wrong with you. You need to do something, okay? Another part of it will be dizziness, which is related to the shortness of breath. When you feel mareado, that's dizziness. Again, if you start feeling that, make sure to take a break. Sit down, look for a chair where you can sit down because that's part of the management. You need to find out if you are experiencing this symptom to find out if you need to manage the symptom. Okay. And finally, but not least, upset stomach. An upset stomach, when you feel something wrong with your stomach due to your nervousness, due to the glossophobia, the fear that you're experiencing, you can also feel this. It, it doesn't need to be all the way to diarrhea. <laughs> it doesn't need to be all the way to that. It could just be like some experiencing some pain in your stomach. But that still, it gives you an upset stomach. So we need to be careful about that. So the good news here is that we can prepare to avoid that glossophobia. And that's what we're talking about here. If you notice about the topic that we're covering, it's not about just the speaking anxiety. We're talking about managing. Managing is a synonym of administrating. Managing, speaking, anxiety. So if we're talking about managing this anxiety, what should we do? And here is the thing, what you could do to get prepared and to overcome, I'm writing the, the word here, to overcome, this anxiety. To overcome means that you can get rid of, sort of like eliminate that, or at least lower, decrease that anxiety. If you cannot overcome it in total, you could at least decrease it. And that's perfect. 
as long as you're feeling better each time, you are working on managing that anxiety. All right. So here um, I'm going to present more than 20 different points to get you from getting ready the moments, the few moments just before you're going to speak and when you are actually speaking. So let's take a look at it. And the first thing to get prepared is about selecting. When we are going to talk to an audience, if we're going to talk to an audience, there should be a topic. There should be a un tema that we're going to talk to the audience. So we should be able to select it. Maybe on your work, somebody else selected for you. But still, in the selection of the best words to communicate the topic, in the selection of the best visual aid on the, that, that we talked about it before, right? All of the, the material that you can actually use. We talked about it last week on the effective data presentation. If you can select the proper material relating to yourself, that's what it says in here. Select the topic that interests you. This is number one. You should be interested in that topic. Even if you don't know anything, you should get yourself into the topic and you should consider that as an interest, a personal interest. Number two, prepare. Once that you have selected the topic, you need to prepare. And of course, you need to carefully know your material. When you are speaking to an audience, you are responsible of that information, of that data, of that material that you are going to talk about. And you need to take the time for preparation. That's why it's number two. And number three, which is super, super, super important. You need to remember this. This is very, very important. Practice. <laughs> I remember myself telling you in so many different classes, you need to practice. Practice, rehearse. These are synonyms. Practice, rehearse your talk with a friend. This is one of the best things that you can do to overcome anxiety. Practice. How many times am I going to practice? As many as I need it. If I manage my anxiety and my topic, my presentation, very good with just one time for practice. Oh, I'm very good. And if that's enough for me, that's great. But this is not the same for everyone. Some people need needs to practice five times. Some people need to practice three times. Some people need to practice 10 times. But practice, rehearse. You need to rehearse what you're going to speak. If you don't rehearse, it becomes a mess. You don't even know what you're going to say. Or in terms of managing your time, it becomes a disaster because you, don't, you didn't practice. You don't know what comes next. And then what happens if I receive a question? I don't know what to do. And then I don't have more time left. And now it's a total mess. So you need to practice. Again, the question is, how many times do I practice? As many times as I need. As many times as I need. Number four, no. How many times have we talked about this? 
You need to know your audience. Know your audience. Know what their knowledge is, what their background is. How can they understand your topic? You need to know beforehand. It means before you are presenting, you need to know really, truthfully, your audience. Number five, I like this one a lot. Challenge. Challenge. Challenge negative thinking. Make three times five cards of positive thoughts or have friends write out inspirational thoughts for you. That's what I'm saying. I really like this. This one requires a little more work, but it's telling you, hey, you can use, you can use some little cards like from this side and write down some thinking. But in, instead of writing some negative things, no, write some positive thinking that you can use them to help you when you're presenting. If you start feeling the anxiety, you can take those cards, those little cards that you have and read it. Take a moment, step out of your speaking and read that, make yourself more confident and go back to your topic to speak to your audience. This is really nice because you can also use some friends. You can ask some friends and, hey, write something for me. You can practice with that same friends one or, or a group of friends and you can actually ask that group of friends to write down those thoughts that are, go, that are going to help you with your anxiety when you are presenting that topic. Right now, uh, the ones that have a big, big opportunity for this because you are together at this time, uh, Alan and, Ana, uh, and Anael, you guys can start practicing this, write for each other some inspirational thoughts and help each other because you're sharing in this, this space. And, but the same thing, you can do it with everyone in the group. Ask your friends. Ask your friends from a for a practice and ask your friends for some thoughts, some inspirational thoughts that can help you challenge your situation. Okay, hopefully you, you're gonna take the time. Number six, expect positive reaction then if you're expecting positive reactions you are with a set of mind you already prepared you practice you challenge yourself and now you are expecting some success because you did all of those other five points and you should have that set of mind you should be expecting a success, éxito of your speaking. Next will be the no. Okay, we have a no in number four, but now we have a different no. The no in number four is about getting to know your audience because you need to know them before you start speaking for them. But on number seven, we have the no, the room, the space. The space will help us to become less nervous and more confident. We need to know the room. It shouldn't be unfamiliar. We should be able to visit the speaking space before we talk, before we speak. We should be able to visit that place. Can we do that? Of course. Any time that you're going to present something, we should be able, you should be able to go to that place that you're going to present and get to know the place, the area, get familiar with it. It might be a small room, a small conference room. It might be up as big as an auditorium. You might need to use a microphone. Get to know the place. Go 
to that place before you start speaking. If you can practice there, if you can go and practice number three, it's, that's even better because you're not just going to become familiar with the room. You're going to become familiar with both things, the room, the topic, and probably part of the audience. That's just great. Wonderful. <laughs> Number eight, employ. Here's uh, one of the, the nice things to do. Employ aerobic exercises, aerobic exercises strategy daily. Aerobic exercises can cut anxiety by 50%. This is very nice. This is about exercising, working out. This might not be directly related to your talk, to your audience, but it's related to your body. You need to keep your body healthy, managing those breathing. When you do aerobic exercises, you teach your body to control your breathing. Even when your heart is speeding, when your heart is pounding very, very fast, you can still manage to lower those heartbeats thanks to those exercises. So is it okay to exercise not for getting shape or, or having a nicer body? Yes, it's so good to keep exercising. It's not just for you to, to look good, but it's also to have more oxygen sent to your brain. And then if your brain gets the correct oxygen, uh, the correct amount of oxygen, it turns to work better. So this is one big, huge recommendation to lower your anxiety, do some exercise, physical exercise. It's just simple working out, but aerobic, which is you need to move fast. So your body understands when your heart beats up, okay? Number nine, eat. And you're like, what? Yes, eat. And here we're talking about good food for your body to understand the changes and manage the anxiety even better. Take a look at this. At the end of the information that I included here, you're gonna find that it says eliminate caffeine, sweets, and empty calories. Empty calories are usually related to fat calories. Those that have a lot of fat, mucha grasa. <gasps> You're like, what? Caffeine, no more coffee for me. If I'm... Yeah, that's actually it counteracts with your body. Caffeine might be good to keep you awake, but in terms of how the brain works and how the brain sends all of the messages to your heart and to the rest of your body, it actually works the opposite. So if you experience a lot of fear and nervousness, if you're going to speak to an audience, avoid drinking coffee, um, cola, soda, or teas, some teas that have uh, caffeine. Because like I'm telling you, it counteracts. It has the opposite effect that you're looking for. So you need to, to eat uh, successful foods that contain tryptophan. And tryptophan is related, is an enzyme that is related to dairy products so you could be consuming some yogurt, yogurt, or uh, milk, turkey. Those um, meats that are not red, no red meat, but uh, white meat like turkey or salmon, 
they are really good food for yourself. And complex carbohydrates, they can help you calm the body. So that's another key for understanding your body and trying to overcome or to eliminate the anxiety that you may feel. And if you are getting related to some of these things, you should start working on this. Like we said on number eight, start exercising, but exercise on a high impact, like aerobic exercise. Eat the correct foods. Avoid the empty calories related to a lot of fat or related to like some fries, chips, papita, the chips, um, and dulces, the sweets, and caffeine, cafeína. Make sure to avoid, no, say no to those. And number 10, like I said, is more than 20 points over here. Number 10, sleep. Sleep deprivation is really bad for the brain. So we need to take the time to sleep. For anything that we're going to experience, anything that we're going to be doing, and especially on this topic, if we're talking about managing speaking anxiety, we need to sleep. Get good hours of sleep. Quality time for sleeping. Sleep for success success no and get the number of hours of sleep you need for optimal performance and this is very personal when you become an adult you no longer need those 10 hours of sleep that you needed when you were a child when you were six seven eight nine ten years old you needed to sleep 10 hours per day once you became a teenager you needed like eight hours of sleep for a good night's sleep. But once you become an adult, it becomes different because your body is no longer uh, growing. It's just reproducing cells, but cells that are copying what you actually have. So it's different. So now the sleep for some people becomes eight hours, which is very good. For some people it's seven hours of sleep a day. Some people it's six hours of sleep a day. So as long as it is the amount of time that your body needs for optimal performance. And everybody can know what optimal performance means. For me, my optimal performance will be like for all of the activities that I have during the day that I can do with them with energy, awake, despierta, con energía, with energy, awake, and that I won't feel wrong. No headache, uh, no uh, flashes, like, like some changes in temperature of my body because I didn't sleep correct. So like I'm saying, it depends of everyone. I, may, I might need six hours, but that's okay with my body. But I don't know for Sarai, maybe for Sarai it's eight hours. And for Arlette, since she's uh, carrying a baby right now, for Arlette might be about 10 hours right now. So it all depends on your body, but you need to know your body. Since we're talking about anxiety, you need to know your body. Nobody else knows your body more than you do. Okay? Yes or no? Yes, yes, you are right. Okay, good. And number 11. So since we continue talking about this point, I would like to change a little bit of it. And I would like... Uh, relate everyone to it so i'm gonna go and spice it up change it a little bit and i'm gonna go and ask one of you to read it at least read it and then we'll see if you can participate a little more but 
you are going to read the point, okay? So number 11, I'm gonna uh, share it again. We were left in this, each several hours. So uh, I would like for it to be voluntarily, just read the point and we can talk about it. But if you're not volunteering for this, then I'm going to point one of you. <laughs> okay. So uh, anyone that wants to read number 11, please. Me. Good, Sarai, go ahead. 11, eat several hours before the talk, no immediately before. Yes. Eat a lot of time before. This is very important because if in any case that the food that you took digested the wrong way, if you have problems, you have time to feel better. That's why the recommendation is do your eating, eat several hours. Several is not one hour or two hours, it's more than that, three, four five hours if it's possible before the talk, not immediately before. Because maybe with that anxiety, you can start feeling even wrong or even worse. You can feel the stomach ache, something wrong in your stomach if you eat like 10 minutes or half an hour before you're going to speak. So no, avoid doing that. Number 12, thank you, Sarai. Who wants to read number 12? Me. Yes, Ceci, go ahead. Sure. Dress for suicide your suicide. Dress comfortably and appropriate, appropriately for this situation, look your best. Good. So that's another thing that you need to consider all of the time you want to get a positive and very good impression from your audience so you feel that they are looking at you happy and expecting something from you dress for su success Vistase exitosa. Exitoso. but also comfortably and appropriately not because it's comfortably you're going to dress in shorts or super micro short. <laughs> I, I mean, for <laughs> seriously, formally speaking, it does not a, a formal attire or a dress that you should wear. So shorts uh, are a no. And uh, some uh, revealing clothes for women, as those are a no. If you're showing your breast, it is, is a no. <laughs> that's not for success. That's for a different type of success <laughs> yeah but you should look your best look your best there is a saying that it is it is not just for anxiety it's just a saying for for professionally speaking in in a job position it's it's a big saying let me share it with you they said like you should dress as the position the job position that you want to get que se debería de vestir como el puesto que quisiera tener. So, if you want to be a manager, si quieres ser un gerente, you should dress as a manager. So that's the thing. If you want to present a topic, a formal topic to an audience, you should dress yourself in that same way, in, with that idea. So, is that going to help me reduce the anxiety? Yes, because what I'm telling you is the answer from the audience. The audience, when they see you, they consider you more if you're dressed your best, if you're dressed appropriately, and if you're dressed formally. Number 13, thank you, Ceci. Number 13? Me. Elizabeth? Saying negative thinking, continue positive thinking. Yes. In every case, not just for anxiety, but this is for your life. Challenge negative thinking, continue positive thinking. Keep thinking yourself as positive. 
But how can you challenge this? ¿Cómo lo puede hacer? Think positive. And you need to be uh, self-conscious. You need to be self-conscious of how you react to everything. Self conscious. Conscious. You need to become self-conscious. You know yourself. If you are of that type of people that is that that is very negative or that we so called toxic. You know people like that, right? Like anything that you say, like, ah, oh, no, ah, oh, just because, ah, oh, that everything is negative for them. Well, you need to find out if you are like that and you need to change. That's what it's called, challenge. All of those negative thinking and switch your mind to positive thinking. You can do it, but you need to become self-conscious on how you react. Thank you, Elizabeth. Number 14, please. Me. Me. Uh, I think that Sergio was first. Sergio. And then Ana Karen. If you need to express your fears to a friend. If you need to, comma. So you stop. Um, if you need to express, express yourself, express your, your fears, fears to a friend. To a friend. Si es tan grave, busca a tu amigo y expresa tus miedos. Why is this important? Speaking, I mean, psychologically speaking about this, it's that speaking your fears helps you overcome them. Hablando de sus miedos les ayuda a entenderlos y a dejarlos atrás to overcome them, to leave them behind. Thank you, Sergio. Ana Karen, 15. And this is related to the one that we talked in the first 10. Number 15. Review Oh, I'm gonna, I'm going to explain something new to you. How do you read this? Three? Times five. And this is not talking about tiempo. It's talking about a multiplication. Okay. Uh, review three times five cards of the inspirational talk. Okay. So it's not just the ones that your friends write to you or, or a partner. You can also look for some and check them once and again and again, that's going to help your brain to keep into this positive mind. And uh, okay, this size, this is just talking about the size. It's about three inches times five inches. So I write it down in different ways. Uh, but this is because uh, those cards, you can find them in, in any uh, store where, where they send, uh, where, where they sell office supplies, because it's common to have those little cards. But you could also use look, something like, like a post-it. Post uh, they are like three times, times three size. It's just talking about something small that you can carry with you and and keep positive or inspirational thoughts that can help you at the, with the time when you are presenting, when you are speaking to the audience. So really good. And for everyone, not just for Ana Karen, thank you Ana Karen, but for everyone, whenever we're talking about multiplication, math terms, and we, if we have a multiplication, it's read like this, se lee de esta forma. This is not four, it's time. Those signs like uh, the cross, the parentheses, uh, the little point, uh, the star, they uh, are red time for a multiplication. So for example, I'm just 
making a, a different uh, a parenthesis here. For example, if we are doing this math operation like uh, 3B times 4C divided by 10, divided by times. Okay, so this is extra for you to, uh, to acknowledge the math operation and how you read them out loud. Okay, so that was some extra knowledge. Thank you, Anna Karen. Number 16, who wants to read it, please? Practice your talk one last time. Plus Eduardo, good. Practice your talk one last time. You have practiced like 10 times, but the day of the presentation, let's just say that you have a, you are going to speak in an auditorium by 10 a.m. So you need to consider some time before and practice one more time, one last time. You could do it like 8 a.m. Or, or at 9 a.m. It will depend on how long your, your talk is. But practice one last time. And that's it. Thank you, Jose Eduardo. Number 17? Anyone? Go to the room early to ready equipment and your podium. Thank you, Luis Roman. Go to the room early to ready equipment and your podium. So what happens when, uh, when you're not ready? We have seen this. I know that for sure you have experienced this when you are being the audience. You have seen some speakers like at the time that you're supposed to start. Let's just continue saying that you are presenting at 10 a.m. And your audience is there already. And you're getting there at 10 a.m., exactly at 10 a.m. And by that time, you're like, oh, uh, sorry, can, can anyone connect? This is my USB. I have uh, on my USB drive, I have the, the presentation here. Automatically, you are losing your audience because you're late. And even worse, another situation. You get there on time, but it's already late. And then you give them your USB drive with your PowerPoint. And then you start plugging it into the computer that is projecting and it doesn't work. <laughs> How many possible things can happen? How many possible things can go wrong? Cuántas cosas pueden salir mal? That's why. Go there, go to the room early. So here is another question. How much time should we consider as early? At least, at least we need like 15 minutes before we start speaking. At least. Because 15 minutes might be enough time to plug our USB or to connect our computer to test the microphones if you're going to use microphones. At least 15 minutes are good. But if you have half an hour, 30 minutes, I don't seem to have enough space to write down over there. So I'm going to write it a little up there, 30 minutes. 30 minutes might be even better. Yes? So consider the time. Thank you, Luis Roman. Thanks a lot. And uh, we have more for people to participate. Number 18, who wants to read it? Yo. Nayeli. <clears throat> hey, wait, wait, wait. The correct way to say it, the correct way to say it in English is me, me. Me. It's not I. Me. <laughs> it's not I. It's me. Me. Okay, go ahead, Raquel. Exercise immediate, immediately before that time to reduce adrenaline levels. Okay, thank you. Exercise immediately before the talk to reduce adrenaline levels. 
adrenaline, if, if you start feeling the nervousness, the adrenaline goes up, way up to the sky, and it works against you and to contra. So you need to look up for some anxiety reduction techniques like uh, here, like this one. This technique is really nice. Just before the talk, like two minutes or five minutes before you start speaking, you can start doing some exercises like this. Deep rhythmic breathing. Like you inhale, inhale the, the air. Count one, two, three, four. Be conscious of your inhaling and exhaling of your breathing, be conscious, start counting. In your mind, of course, one, two, three, four, and then exhale. Inhale, exhale, count down. You can also try holding your breath, like you inhale, stay there, don't, don't exhale, stay there, stay there, stay there. Count, and then now exhale. What you're doing is you're telling your brain to calm down and immediately you are re reducing the adrenaline levels. You are calming down, estás calmando. You could do some aerobic exercise, um, this could be dangerous if you do too much, but you can do some movements with your body, with your hands, those movements that help your mind, movements that will help your mind um, work and start releasing the other um, hormones that will keep the adrenaline levels down. And some muscle relaxation it can also help visualization strategies if you practice and practice and practice you can set your mind go that way to your practice remember visualize it and you're going to feel much better when you start talking you're gonna be very calm and confident and positive Number 19. Thank you. Me. Emma, go. Number 19. Who said the restroom immediately before the talk? Thank you, Emma. Use the restroom immediately before the talk. Yeah. Because you don't know what's going to happen. And maybe you're going to uh, take a lot of time or a lot of questions. And when you feel nervous, your bladder, tu vejiga, it, it, it kind of works against you. Like, hey, you got to go pee. <laughs> it tells you, it tells your body, hey, you got to go. So go before, go like five minutes before you start talking, go to the restroom. Empty your bladder, vacía en su vejiga. And you're going to be better when you do that. So if you're going to talk to an audience, go to the restroom before you start talking. Number 20, thank you, Emma. Me. Take a glass of water to the talk. You see what I did? I keep reading and I'm talking to my audience. Take a glass of water to the talk. When you're talking, not just because you're nervous, that's something very uh, normal to happen to your body. You, uh, when you're moving, just by moving, you start losing water, you start dehydrating. And of course, for the parts that you're using the most when you're speaking, your mouth and all of your um, respiratory system starts feeling dry. So that could work against you because if you feel the dryness, you can start coughing 
or you can feel like uh, your voice is changing. So this is a natural thing to do. You need to refresh your mouth and all of your throat. You need to refresh it. And that's why bring in a glass of water or a bottle of water to the top is a good action for your body. But don't just bring it to see it. Bring it to drink it. Okay, good. Thanks, Emma. I think that was Emma, right? Or who was the last one? Next one, we have more. We have more. Anyone? Anyone? Volunteers, number 21. Now we are in the presentation, a positive experience is steaming from careful preparation. If I were to translate this. Cuando ya estás hablando en público, considéralo como una experiencia positiva. Pero tienes que poner tu mente en ello. From careful preparation. Number 21, anyone, any volunteers? Me. Yes, yeah. Cecilia. Uh, Twenty-one interprets anxiety sim symptoms as excitement. 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 Good. Number twenty-one. Interpret anxiety symptoms as excitement. How can we do that? Okay. Considering all of the twenty points that we just mentioned before. If you select the topic, if you practice, if you consider those um, very nice thoughts, positive thoughts, if you exercise your body, if you eat with the time before a few hours or several hours, if you go to the restroom, all of those, if you have already practiced all of those other points, you should be ready to start for an actual good presentation. And that's when your mind becomes certain that something is happening to your body, but you can manage it. That's why you start interpreting or, in, or understanding that anxiety symptoms could be some excitement. It's an opportunity. That's what it means. Think about it as an opportunity. Think about those symptoms as an opportunity and become excited that you can overcome that anxiety. Number 22, anyone? Thank you. Thanks, Cecilia. Number 22. Me. Yes, Anael. Use the podium to practice grounding strategies. Touch the podium to steady yourself and to remind yourself that you are safely connected to the ground, which is firm and steady beneath your feet. Good. This is a very nice point, right, Anael? It's like, okay, you have a podium. That's even better because you have some place. Okay, I'm showing here. Some place, some space that you can hold to and you can start feeling that your feet are in the ground. Your hands are in the ground. And then you feel that you're steady. You're connected and you're firm. That you're not going to fall down. You're not going to shake. That's something that the, the brain, it, it interprets it in that way. Your brain will understand if you can hold to something, you are not falling down. You're fine. You're okay with it. Nothing is going to happen to you. So you can go ahead and practice that before you start uh, presenting. And also, if you start feeling the anxiety, you're presenting. Let's say that you are in the middle of the talk and you start feeling some anxiety, some nervousness. Go and look and find the podium. 
Touch it. Touch it. Hold yourself to it. You're going to feel better automatically. Just because your brain is so smart, is very intelligent, and understand that, your brain understands that you're okay. And it reduces anxiety. Good. Thanks, Anael. Number 23. Me. Take a security blanket with you, a complete tapey version of your toll to only be used as special strategy. Who was speaking? It didn't show on the computer. Who was that? Who was this voice? I think it was Vanessa. Vanessa, okay. If I wanna direct myself to, to, to her, so that's what I'm asking. Who was the one who was speaking? It didn't show on my screen, and that's what I'm asking. Okay, so Vanessa, take a security blanket with you, a complete tight version of your talk to only be used as a backup strategy. So here's the thing. You never know what can happen, even if you practice several times, if you went to the room, you became familiar to the room, you practice again before time, you exercise, everything. And let's just say that even your PowerPoint is working, but in the middle of your presentation, something happens to the computer. And you're like, oh, I don't remember what comes next. And then the anxiety, the glossophobia starts on you. Goes like, ah. Bring something with you. Make sure that you have a blank copy. That, that's the blanket, the security blanket. A typed version, print it out. Print out your presentation, your visual aid. Imprima sus ayudas visuales, su PowerPoint. Tráigalo consigo, un foldercito. Just in case. If something happened, you can, okay. So, ah, uh, yeah, this comes next. And then you can speak and you can follow the way that you practice your presentation. Remember that always, always, always bring something, a secure blanket, bring it with, bring it with you. And that will reduce the anxiety because if something happens to your visual aids, yeah, it builds up, construye más ansiedad. But if you have something to hold to it, a secure blanket, it's gonna go good. So thanks, Vanessa. Number 24, anyone? Me. Arlette, yeah. thank you. You start to reduce audience attention on you. Thank you. You still to reduce audience attention on you. PowerPoint presentation, a video film clips, handouts. Handouts. Son los, las copias que le dan a la audiencia. Those are the handouts. Show and tell objects to pass. Uh, for example, if my topic is about uh, stones, piedra, I should bring some stones with me. And so I can bring the stone and pass it out to the audience and uh, that's going to be good. Then the attention is not just in me, but also on those things that I'm passing through the audience. It's always a good um, way to do. Uh, use some tools. And it's going to help the audience to understand whatever your topic is. And they're going to understand it better. And also, the attention is not just going to be in you. It's also going to be in those uh, objects. So, good idea. Thanks, Arle. And we're almost there. Get out, number 25. Anyone? Number 25. Any volunteers or should I start pointing fingers to anyone in my audience <laughs> from this group? 
number 25. Someone? Yeah. Get out of the safe and the audience. audience. Thank you, Angeles. Yes, get out of yourself, engage the audience. That's what I've been doing with you all of this time. When I ask you, hey, can you please tell me, just read the numbers. Get out of yourself, engage the audience. No nomás hables tú o que todo seas tú. You need to find a way to link yourself with the audience engage the audience and, and there are different ways you can also always uh, do some dynamic work with your audience as long as it is related to the topic of course yes thanks angeles number 26 look yes thanks yesenia look at friendly face in your audience look at friendly faces in your audience try to find the friendly faces, try to find those. Uh, you need to scan your audience. Necesitan escanear la audiencia and find those friendly faces. There's always friendly faces. It might just be one, but it might be 10, 20 friendly faces. You need to find those because whenever you start feeling those symptoms of the anxiety, you can go and look at them, those friendly faces. The friendly faces will be those who are paying attention to you and that are looking at you positively, calmly. Aquellos que te están viendo bien y que te están siguiendo. Ellos son las caras amigables. Find them. Find them because they are going to be your ground. Ellos van a ser tu piso. Los que te van a mantener bien. All of the time, scan your, scan your audio. Thanks, Yesenia. Number 27. Me. 27. Right? Use humor as needed. Yeah, use humor as needed. It's like, you're not going to be a comedian. You don't need to be a comedian. You are an industrial engineer. But... You can use humor and that's really good. It's a good way to use it, but be careful because this is not talking about bringing some jokes just because and, and just because you may think that you can break the ice. No, it's not about joking. It's about keeping yourself in that way. Like, hey, uh, you need to be humorous. And if something happened, bring it bring it to the topic if something is happening with the audience you could prepare some uh, stories that might be humorous and of course keep them related to the topic si van a contar alguna historia pues tiene que ser relacionada para que no se pierda la audiencia but as needed don't overuse it don't become a comedy and keep it close to the topic. Number 28. Hello. Me? Number 28. Use the room's physical space to your advantage. Advantage. Adventure walk around as appropriate. Oh, one of one of my favorite things i don't know if you remember when when we used to be face to face in our classes but but walk around is one of my favorite things to do like because if we just keep glue ourselves to just one little spot ah anxiety is so easy to overcome our bodies to bring it to our bodies as if it was a ghost don't glue yourself to just one little spot. Move around the room. That's what it's telling you. Camina alrededor. 
mientras estás hablando. Pero sin olvidar estar viendo a tu audiencia, siempre enfocado a la audiencia. Por eso dice, siempre y cuando sea apropiado. Use the room's physical space to your advantage. Walk around as appropriate. Number 21. Thanks, Sergio. Regulate. Me. Emma. Appropriately regulate your voice. Appropriately regulate your voice. Good. Remember this, it always happens. If you just keep a monotone, if you just keep a monotone, uh, your audience becomes bored. bored. They are going to say, oh, this is so boring. Mm. Or even worse, they're going to sleep. <laughs> And that's the worst thing that can happen when your audience goes to sleep. That's like, what's happening? They're not even paying attention, but they're not paying attention because they don't want to pay attention. It happened because you forgot your tone of voice. You are not moving up and down and in the middle and goes up and down again. So you need to regulate your voice. Speak clearly, enunciate. Open your mouth, open it. Do not mumble. There's a lot of people that I have seen that they speak like, yes, we are speaking. They keep close, a closed mouth. And no, you need to express a little more. When you are with an audience, you need to move your mouth and all of your body, actually. You need to control your movement. The body language is so important, but also the voice. Slow down if necessary. Sometimes you need to speak. You need to speak slow. And sometimes you just could keep just fast, going fast, and that's fine. Lower your voice. Speak from your diaphragm. Project your voice. Use energy when you speak. That's about projecting. Projectar su voz. Es que se note la energía mientras habla. And you can, you can compare with everyone that you have listened to and you are going to see the energy that is different. And of course, use appropriate animation. And that's related to, okay, it should connect to your voice, to the movements of your mouth. You should connect the rest of the body and the way that you are moving. the way that you're projecting with your body. It should be connected with your voice. And that was the last one. And of course, added considerations, additional considerations that we should considerate. Seek out public speaking opportunities to desensitize or to reduce your fear of communication apprehension. If you are one of those people, uh, if you are on those 75% of the people that suffers closophobia, these are additional considerations. Seek out public speaking opportunities. Busca oportunidades para hablar en público. Ay, no, pero es que yo tengo miedo. That's what we're talking. If you want to overcome your anxiety, you need for, to look for more opportunities. Consider the use of anti-anxiety medication. That if Your anxiety is a bigger problem, then you need to, <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> you need to find, hey, I need to raise it. You need to find um, experts. And so you need to go for a psychiatrist. Uh, because you might need medication. I'm not telling you that you're crazy. No, you already know that this happens to a lot of the population. But if this is a really, really bad thing that happens to you, consider looking for some medication. That's, that's completely fine. Do more public speaking. Gain experience while practicing because practice 
makes perfect. One of my favorite things to say is like, yes, practice. Practice makes perfect. And practice is not just about practicing with myself in front of a mirror or just with a friend or with a partner. Practice becomes real when you find more opportunities. Look for them. Just saying, this is additional considerations. And here are the references that I used to build up this presentation. I consulted uh, Kathleen Staley, Dr. Kathleen Staley for the 30 ways of, to manage speaking anxiety. And also from Arlene Konsek, the tips for managing speaking anxiety. They are um, specialists in anxiety disorders and in public speaking and while well, they keep um, information about this, you can click on the links and go find and read a little more about that. With that said, this is the topic that we were supposed to cover today. I already uploaded the presentation to your Canvas, um, the, the, the session on your Canvas for the, for the class. It's under week four. We are actually on week number four for this semester. And you can find all of the material there. I will also upload this video once we finish. And once it's, it's ready, it's going to be on YouTube and you're gonna have the usual link that you can watch it. And like I said, you have two homeworks for vocabulary and because you, we need to cover vocabulary. You're gonna have two exercises with vocabulary and an extra one. You're gonna have a third one. I'm going to open up a discussion, the weekly discussion for we to keep talking about this topic, to keep talking about anxiety. What I'm going to ask you to discuss over there is about sharing, to share, compartir, sharing some experiences. And with sharing, we may start off first coming or reducing, decreasing our anxiety. Okay, any question? No, for now. Okay, <laughs> so I'm going to stop recording. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. I'm going to stop recording.